again, the synthesis is essentially ADSR, envelopes, oscillators. That's, those are the main, the main principles, the main, the main parts of synthesis. ¿Qué pasa familia? ¿Cómo estáis? Aquí George Five en un nuevo vídeo, un vídeo muy especial porque hoy tengo aquí a mi amigo Quans, uno de mis mejores Hola. amigos de mi época de Londres. Y nada, hoy vamos a estar hablando un poco de, de todo lo que es el rollo de los sintes. Tenemos aquí mi profe Ref2, que ya tocaba que alguien que supiese le sacase un poquito el polvo al teclado. Y bueno, para poneros un poco en contexto, Quans es teclista, productor, compositor. Estudió en la Universidad de West London, hizo Pop Performance and Production. Y bueno, ha girado y ha tocado con gente tan loca como Dua Lipa, Anne-Marie, Ella Air, Dermot Kennedy o Jason Derulo, entre otros. Champions League. Aquí tenemos la Champions League. Y bueno, y hoy en día vive en Londres, pero básicamente está haciendo tours ¿no? por, sí. por todas partes. Sí. Y hace también curro de sesión, de estudio, sí. ¿no? tanto como productor, como teclista, es un poco todo. Juan se habla un poquito de español. Así que hablaremos, haremos un Spanglish, pero cuando nos pongamos un poco técnicos con, con el tema de los sintes, hablar en inglés, no os preocupéis, que os pondré los subtitulitos debajo para que nos podamos expresar todos con, con profunda comodidad. So, what, what are we going to talk about today, Grant? So, today we're going to talk about the synthesis in general, go through some of the basics, um, some of the amazing sounds that this has to offer. The first thing we have here is just a, a, a sound. So we've just loaded up one of the presets. Okay. Um, and what I like to do when I'm producing or, or making sounds or, or playing on the profit is, is use their presets because they have amazing start points cool. um, and amazing sounds you can gig with anyway, right? But um, what the idea for me is to know the basics of how to use synthesis in general and use the profit, and then I can tweak the sounds that they offer to make you know, whatever sound I actually want. First of all, we have this sound here, for example, I'm just gonna show you. Right? <laughs> so already, that sounds really amazing. That sounds great, yeah. Um, the first thing I wanna talk about is what we call ADSR, right? Okay. Which, um, for people who already know since, are gonna know what this is, hopefully. So it's attack, decay, sustain, and release. And this is what we have here in this section. And you can see it a few other times. We have it here, attack, decay, sustain, release. Yep. Attack, decay, sustain, release. And so you can tell it's very important. Attack, decay, and release. All three of these are time-based functions, right? Okay. So what this means is, for example, we have the attack, and this is basically from the moment you press the sound to the, the, the loudest point of that sound, right? So turn the attack all the way up, right? The sound doesn't come in straight away. So it takes time to get to that exactly. loudest point. Yep. So the higher the attack, the longer it takes to get to that point. And if I attack low, it's straight away, right? Yep. So I'm gonna keep it about here, so you can hear. So then we move on to the decay, right? So the decay now is the time it takes for that sound from that point of the, the highest point of the attack to get to the sustain level, which I'll talk about in a minute. So this is another time-based function. And so now if I have the, the decay low, as you can hear, now stays at a certain level. Yep. If I have the decay high, you're not going to hear much difference yet because we need to talk about the sustain. Okay. But now, the sustain level. This is the only function that is volume based, right? So basically all we have here is time and this is this is volume based. So this basically means that it's a, a level of dB, right? It's a decibel level. So if I have the sustain low, you'll see what happens. You notice the song's gone. It's done. The sound's gone. Yeah. Right? Why is this? Because we've used the attack to come up to the decay point. And then it's gone straight down to, to zero sustain. because that's yeah. where the sustain level okay. is, right? And that's a volume based level. And because the decay is quite low, it goes there quickly. So if I have the decay high, notice what happens. You can hear it going down, but it's taking longer. Again, it's a time-based function, takes longer to get down to that sustain level. So it's, in the end, it's gonna it's gonna go to zero as well. Yes. If you have this to zero, exactly. it's gonna take longer. It's gonna take longer, but it's gonna go to zero eventually, right? Okay, cool. But now, if I turn the sustain level, let's say just turn it to halfway, so a moderate level, 
and I keep the decay around the same. You can hear it slightly come down, and I haven't let go of the note yet, so just so you guys know, I'm, I'm holding the note. And that's gonna stay at that sustain level forever as long as I hold this note, all right? Cool. And look what happens if I turn the sustain down. While I hold it, that level comes down because I'm holding the note still. So now we're gonna talk about the final function, which is the release, release, right? Which is also very important. So the release is basically the moment I let go of the note, how long it takes for that note to basically go to zero. Right? Okay. So if I keep everything as it was the same. So now, if I have the release to zero, notice what happens when I let go. Ah, okay. Sound comes straight off, right? Notice what happens if I now turn the release up. It still goes. Yeah, it still goes. Yeah. The sound will continue, right? It's on the highest. Now, if I now turn it to about, let's say, 40. Oh, no, maybe it needs a bit more. Right, you hear it a little bit after I let go. Like the tail. Exactly, it's the tail. And then it tells out. So that's the basic functions of synthesis. That's like the core of how, how to shape a sound, sorry, right? How to shape a sound. So now what I'm going to talk about is the oscillators, but more specifically, the actual types of sounds you can get in these oscillators, okay. right? Um, the first one here is a sawtooth, right? So maybe by the sound you might already guess, it's quite, um, sawtooths are quite, sh quite sharp, basically. So essentially, the actual sound wave looks like this, okay. right? So it looks like teeth. So this is the sound of a, saw a sawtooth, essentially, what you're hearing right now. Yeah, it's sharp. It's quite sharp. It's sharp. Uh, well, actually, do you know what? I'll show you a triangle wave before we go to saw and triangle. It's a bit, you'll hear it's a bit less sharp. Subtle difference. It's a subtle difference, but it's less sharp. And now if you join them together, yeah. Basically, you're putting them together. It's so the triangle is a bit warmer. Triangle is slightly warmer. Slightly. And slightly, because it depends on, on the other things you do to it. Okay. Um, and then now we have a pulse wave, which is pulse wave look almost like squares, right? So they're like kind of like this. And so if you hear this, the difference now. Again, it's quite subtle. But what I'm going to do now is hold the note and I'm going to switch through so you can hear the differences okay. while I'm actually switching through. So we're going to go from saw to. Gonna change. Gonna change again. Change again. So you can hear the difference as well as it's doing. Right? So that's quite a nice exercise to kind of hear the subtle differences between them. And then here you have the oscillator frequencies. And this is exactly what it says in the tin. So it's the actual frequency and it's the note that you start on. So if I now change them, you're gonna hear what happens. It literally changes the note. Ooh. So now I'm on F. So if I do it on one oscillator again, so you can hear it better. You're literally changing the note. It's basically transposing. Exactly. Basically transposition. So you're transposing the note. Um, and then we do the fine tune again. So this is just fine tuning, right? So we're now talking about kind of microtones, basically. As you can hear, exactly. So we're flattening the note. So you're killing perfect pitchers. Here. Exactly, they're gonna hate this. <laughs> perfect pitch, if you've got perfect pitch, I apologize, okay? <clears throat> I apologize, I should have warned you. Basically what we have here, and, and all the rest you can play with as well. We have sub octave. You can hear, give them more bass. Yep. Hear noise, very self-explanatory. It gives it white noise, essentially. Yep. And this is, again, this is almost like adding that pitch to it. So basically, that's that's essentially doing what fine tune will do, but it's more of, um, it's more, basically adding more of that to the sound than it than the fine tune would okay so now let's get into some exciting things right let's talk about the LFO okay before you talk about the mm -hmm. LFO what do you want to talk about 
Dale al like, campanita y suscríbete al canal. Es el momento. Si no te lo muy, digo, muy no importante. Lo haces. Muy importante. Chicos. ¿Vale? Os estamos dando una masterclass de síntesis. Bueno, os estamos, no. Os está dando, Juan, una masterclass de síntesis. Así que haced el favor de premiarlo con un like, una campanita, una suscripción y un mensajito de, 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 de amor a Juan. Por cierto, tenéis su Instagram en la descripción de este vídeo. So, actually, the LFO is very important with a sound like this, because as you can hear with this sort of sound, right? It's pulsing, right? Yep. The reason it's pulsing is because of, of this section, yep. right? And so let me explain what this is doing, basically. So the LFO is essentially using a certain shape of wave to, and I'm a, I've assigned it to another part, which is the low pass filter, which I'm also going to talk about, to basically bring in the sound yep. and, and cut off the sound. So it's essentially doing this. This is the wave that... This is what the LFO wave looks like. Okay. And depending on the type of wave, gives it a different, different sound, different shape, different feeling. So I've got the rev saw on, which is kind of like basically this sort of shape, and you can hear it as well. So this is what it's doing. Yeah. On, off, on, on off, off, on, yeah, off, yeah, on, yeah, off, yeah. right? So that's what essentially what the LFO is doing here. So what I've done, how I've done this, right, is I've turned number one. So we have four different LFOs, but we're using just one here. So I've assigned it to, you can see, LFO destination right here. Oh, yeah. You can assign it to wherever the hell you want on this whole sip. Okay. But what I've done is I've signed it to the low pass filter, which is essentially what is giving it that sound. It's turning the sound on and on off. And off. So it's using the shape of this to basically create this filter effect, which is, which is this, right? Okay. And so I've assigned it to the cutoff. And the amount of which I do this, as you can hear, so if I have it low, Right? And then the sound opens up, the more it allows more sound, right? Yeah. The more I turn it up, basically. So that's essentially what it's doing. And as it allows more sound, the pulsing effect gets less and less because it's basically allowing more sound of through. Of course. Right? So. So you can hear what's happening there, right? The other fun thing we can do here, so I'll change the shape so it's so I so you can hear the difference. It's kind of what I was explaining here. So you've got square now, so it's basically like this. That's the shape. Yeah. Random is literally going to be random. You're going to hear it here. If I turn the speed up, it does weird stuff, basically. Oh. So this, shit. The shape okay. of the random is literally random. It's like this. Okay. Okay. Right. So that's essentially what that's doing. Triangle. And the beautiful thing about this, you can literally hear the shape. Do you know what I mean? If you hear the difference between a triangle, this is sharper, right? Remember what I said? The triangle is, is, is slightly less sharp than the sawtooth. Yeah, definitely. So the sawtooth sounds like this. The triangle sounds like this. They love triangles, man. Yeah, it's I beautiful. love triangles. Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Nos encantan los triángulos. <laughs> I think this is my favorite, the Rev Saw. This one is your favorite? I think so, I think so. It's that pulse. I love that, that rhythm. Because they, they, each shape offers a different rhythm, right? Right? Then the triangle, wow. the triangle's nice. Right? Yeah. And as I kind of explained, you can change the speed at which this happens, right? So right now, this is the this they call it the LFO frequency, right? So essentially, what we're doing is actually assigned to the tempo we've got, right? So you you turn on click sync, and if I change the BPM, notice what happens. It speeds up, and I can change the time in which it does that. So we have it on the beat. Yeah. We have it one and a half on every two beats, half a beat. Right, and so on. So you get the idea. Once you know and you understand the ADSR, you can apply that to everything. So now, let's talk about the filter. I can have this specific sound. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to come in straight away like that. If I turn the attack up, look what happens. You see? It's now, nah, see? It's now it's going to come in. You see the difference? 
then because the attack, so it takes some time to get up to that decay point. Yeah. Okay, so resonance. Resonance, essentially, think of resonance as like the high end tones of the specific sound, right? So if you listen, you can hear what's happening to the actual sound, right? It's those. Exactly, it gives it a pulsing sound. Absolutely. So it gives it more of a high end to it, more of a bite. That's how I look at it anyway. And this is the envelope amount. So again, this is opening up and, and basically giving more of that sound because it's opening up the envelope. Yeah, you can tell. Yeah. Let's talk about now here this section, which is basically the how to edit the different parts of the sound. So you have your overall sound and it's split between two sounds, so A and B, right, which we have here on the profits. So if we want to edit layer B, it just says here, we edit layer B, and this will only give you the B sound, right? As it says here, if we stack A and B, you're going to have A on top of B, and you're going to have both. Right? So the split function will split both sounds down the keyboard. So the split is between here. So you have the B sound, and you have the A sound. Okay. Yeah. Right, you can hear the two different sounds. Of course. And layer A? Layer A is... Ah, when you, when you have nothing When you nothing have nothing pressed. there, you oh, have okay. you use layer A, right? So essentially, this, this is what makes the Prophet really special, and you, you can make some really, really interesting sounds, because let's say you make something crazy just on layer A, you can now add a whole another world. You look at that as a whole separate board now. It's like having, having two, two scenes. It's like having one two cable, scenes. One cable, one cable. Exactly. Then you, uh, and you can bring them together. And that's pretty much that's Beautiful. the that's the gist of the profit. There's a there's a you know a few more parts. The basics. the basics. The basics are the basic. there. And and the basics for the profit are basically the same thing for most of the synths, right? Hundred so, percent. Once you understand those basics, you can get to a synth like this. And like I said before, you you just use the presets they give you because profits have endless presets, and you can just tweak and make it sound exactly how you want it to sound. For, for your productions, for your gigs, for whatever. Yeah, of course. So basically, if you pick up uh, like a Juno now, the, the ADSR. ADSR. That's, you that knowledge it. is going to help you with all the synths. And the cutoff, the release, you, the resonance, everything, everything is, is basically the same. Everything. Beautiful. So wh why don't you play us something before we leave? Let's do it. I'm down for that. Okay. Vamos. Go for it. Yes, bro. Woo. Thank you so much, man. Bueno, chicos, familia, espero que os haya gustado este vídeo de, de, de iniciación a los sintes y en este caso concretamente al Prophet Rep 2. A mí me ha servido de mucho ya que este teclado lo tengo desde hace tiempo y claro que lo he usado y claro que sé la, lo básico que ha contado Quans, pero siempre está guay que, que alguien como él que pilota mucho más nos cuente un poquito en esencia lo, lo que es el sintetizador, ¿verdad? Que además está muy de moda, se usa muchísimo. Muchísimo. Y precisamente por eso es interesante. So, yeah, if you want to say muchas, something. Muchas gracias por having me. And um, I hope this has helped. And just enjoy. Just listen, there's a world, world of sound with these synths and, and any synths for that matter. So, thank you for having me. Um, and hopefully we'll do another video soon. Oh, we will, we will. Gracias, muchas familia. Gracias. Dale al like, campanita, suscribiros y nos vemos en el próximo video. Chao.